Hudson. There you go. Nice. So, yay. Author Talk, we made it. To, we are on Facebook Live now. That, thank you, Amy. My technology. You, okay. There and we we're go. here early because Amy doesn't know how to properly get disqualified from okay. a jury. No, it's not. Yes. It's, it's not like the state. It's federal court. I don't know anything about the federal system at all. And so I just sat there like a quiet little person, didn't know what was going on. And I was the last one to get picked. So, okay, here's a rule. If you're on a jury panel, if you talk too much, you'll scare the lawyers. They'll get rid of you. No, okay. but it wasn't that. When you were quiet, were calling you, you got yeah, picked because they were more scared of other people than they were of you. No. So if you disagreed with like whatever question they asked you, the judge made you stand up and tell everyone why you disagreed. I don't So you should have stand if you stood up about four times, they would say, get out. <laughs> well, you know what? I didn't even know what the questions meant. So I couldn't know what was going on. That (laughs) didn't work. (laughs) I would you, Amy. I wouldn't know what they mean either. So I don't know what all those big legal terms. Those are my definition. Yeah, but you'll be able to figure it out. Legal community, Amy, that you could ask for help. They told me I couldn't talk to anybody. So I just, I just listened and I'm a sucker. I should have just been a rebel and not listen. Well, what, what's funny is when Amy did her radio show on Friday and I, I listened to it and um, they asked her about the jury duty and she said, I can't talk about it. So I'm like, she's really sticking to that. Can't talk about it. So uh, Well, if you talk about it on the radio, they're more likely to hear it. Yeah, right. that's what I thought too. So. The judge and scares me. Okay, I don't want he. I don't want to go to jail. I just don't. That, that's a correct uh, feeling, by the way, because federal <laughs> judges don't play. No, right. he does not, and I don't want to go to jail. So, so Amy, Amy has told me plenty of times she is too cute to be in jail. I am. I'm too pretty, people. Yeah. I'm too pretty to be in jail. And me too. So- I'm too pretty. <laughs> I'm, I'm on that right. one, Russell. Yep. Hey, Jerry's too pretty. <laughs> oh, way too cute. Yeah. We're all too pretty to go to jail. <laughs> so keep me out of jail, people. It's what I'm trying to do. Well, this is a great conversation to have on a Monday morning. And like Russell said, we started a little bit early because Amy does need to leave um, earlier to go to her jury duty. It's a good thing you don't have one of those eight to five juries. So um, in downtown Houston, that's the only ones I've well, ever Well, re- she actually does. The reason they're starting later is because the judge has to do his hearings before the jury trial starts for the day. So they don't make the jury come earlier because they just wait and get angry. Yeah, and he doesn't want us to be in traffic. I mean, he's been really nice to me. Now, not to everyone else, but to the juries, he's very nice and funny with us. Yeah, I've had the non-jury experience with me, <laughs> which is I can imagine. sometimes, you know, <laughs> Mr. Little, let's go back and talk in my office. Oh, uh, you hate it when a federal judge wants to talk to you in their office. It's, well, it's nice to know that even Russell gets a little scared around judges. I would, I would be scared. There's, I'm I not would... afraid. <laughs> Good. I am. Good. I'm scared. So moving along, this is a great topic. And um, we, we talked about quite a few topics while we were just chit chatting and waiting to go live. So if I can remember all of those that we talked about. So, but first we're going to talk to Sue and get an update from the weekend about her um, book launch, the launch of book two, Midlife Chaos. And I have looked at so many different ways to say what this book is about all weekend because you don't want to say the same thing every time and even this so we so we found a new service and I want to give them total credit right. askdavid.com so you might want to check that out for you um <clears throat> I would like everybody to go check that out and um so, well, Terry, for you specifically, if you haven't done it, it's called AskDavid.com. Yeah, we have a lot of questions. Terry is like, it, the books come out, and after we talk about the book, we have a lot of marketing questions to ask Terry. Ooh, okay. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> I've got because a lot of marketing. Like, 
questions, period. Yeah, you're like the opposite, Terry, of the way Sue's done it. So we have, this is like, uh, you know, I, you have Russell versus Amy about the being on a jury, <laughs> Sue's way versus Terry's way of pop marketing. Poor Sandy's in the middle. Sandy's happy, 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 okay, so... And I just got an email just as we were getting started that said, can you please contact me to talk about helping me with my book launch? So, <laughs> yes. Give me a week to recuperate and I'm ready to go again. So <laughs> these, these weekend book launches. Yeah, my, and Amy's jury duty come up. Hey, you know what? I'm trying to get out of it. I can't help it, people. I can't help it. I'm trying just... real hard. <laughs> okay, so James... So we already have a bunch of people joined us. James is on and he's already shared it. Red is on. He's checking in. Bola's hey, on. Red. Nicole Carter's on. Um, Emily Delight is on. Yay. We've got all kind of people joining us for author talk. Ooh, yay. So, Sue, you tell, us, tell me your experience of the weekend. My stomach was in knots the entire weekend. <laughs> well, we knew that. <laughs> But I knew you were doing a lot, so I was trying to function and just move on with my day, <clears throat> and you would give me little updates as the weekend went on, and we kept track of things pretty well, I thought. Um, moving up, it was Mother's Day weekend, so there was a lot of activity within families, so people were busy, but we kept moving slowly up. It was very interesting to watch the numbers, sometimes I would take these big leaps and then sometimes these little bitty climbs and then you think, well, where is this going? Or have we plateaued? I mean, there's just so much going on in your mind when you do a launch like this. But I trust it, Sandy. So I just thought, well, here we go. See where we'll end up. And we Sandy, did. what'd you do this weekend? I <laughs> Specifically to help Sue, what did you do this weekend? Um, first of all, starting, uh, it went live on Friday. So Thursday night, I stayed up till two to make sure nothing, no glitches. Because one thing I found is you can, it's possible to have glitches. So I stayed up, made sure it went live. And then on Friday, we did the Facebook party. So we planned that and promoted that all day Friday. Then um, Saturday, well, so Friday night then, it, it, so it went, uh, the, the ebook became free at 2 a.m. Central Time, uh, midnight Pacific Time, and I've explained that before, that's Amazon time. So I stayed up, made sure it went free, and then shared that, and then I watched it for a couple hours to see if any changes, and nothing, nothing was going on yet. So got some sleep, got up about 7, 38 o'clock, and checked and by then it had i mean it was like it just jumped uh it went from like number in the in the gazillion <laughs> up to like in the thousands and then and we were at number 30 something i think and we were at 51 it, when i got up that morning. oh okay so 51 and um so the thing is i we i picked categories i picked women's slews um humorous mystery or well, fiction mystery humorous and then i picked another one the only all of them went went through the ceiling the only one that made it in the actual top 10 so they were all in the top 10 percent but the top 10 actual numbers uh was the humor and that went to um that went to number five and it, and the interesting thing is it didn't go to number five until last night sue's the one that texted me I thought we had reached the top when we got to late last night. It was late. It was like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Yeah. Sue said, if I'm reading the numbers right, we're at number five. I'm like, oh my gosh. I ran in the office to get a, a you know, screenshot of that. <laughs> and it stayed that till all the way to two o'clock. Mm -hmm. So um, at two, when it went back to um, money, costing money, and I could see the numbers changing again, I went to bed. And, um, but it was just, it was wild. And so if, for all of you out there in Facebook land, I know you're tired of me posting, 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 posting about the same topic. I tried to spice it up some. I tried to change what we said. I used some of the reviews. So thank you to yeah. all of those who reviewed. Even if your review got pulled, 
Yes. And so, so quite a few of them did. Quite a few of them got pulled. They showed them. We saw Bolas. We read it, all of that. And then Bolas disappeared. Two of Sue's son-in-laws uh, posted a review. And one of those got pulled. The other never did get pulled, did it, no. Sue? No. Um, so it's interesting. The big thing is staying up to date with Amazon's algorithms. And I sent you a couple of post this weekend, Russell, because you Russell loves this stuff. I mean loves these numbers. He's he's a he's big into the uh, number part of the algorithms. So um so Terry, we're kind of seeing you like <laughs> laying on oh, the side I, there. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I just realized that I you know that I may need to uh have some extra power for my uh, cam uh my iPhone here. So. I can tell you laid your phone down. That was interesting. Um, so great weekend. I mean, I have a blast you know, with Mother's Day weekend. I never quite counted on the fact that I would have kids here all weekend, but it worked fine. I mean, we went to dinner. I worked until we got ready to go to dinner Saturday night because none of my kids or my husband or anybody likes to go out to dinner on Sunday, Mother's Day. So we did, we actually picked up food at Papacitos and took it over to my new grandson's house. And, and they ate over there so they could stay home. And then they came over here for brunch yesterday. So between people being here, I was in here in the office and I carried my um, iPad with me Saturday night so I could get on and check it. Because for some reason, I can't see the numbers on my, um, um, on my, I, my phone. I, Amy, can you see the numbers on your phone? Because I when I go to Amazon and look down to see what the what the ratings are, it doesn't right. show them on the phone. Yeah, you just have to scroll. It works on mine, but I can put my phone in desktop view too. So, oh, I never thought about putting it in desktop view. So I, I don't know, know if I can do that or not. <laughs> okay, well we'll practice that some other time. <laughs> so overall, it was a great success. Now that's what happened this weekend. And let me say quickly. That quickly. Just, that was the end of it, okay? We've been working on this book launch for a long time and working on getting the book ready and up. So, Sue, so any last word about that and then we'll get on to, um, to Terry. Um, I think the hard work that comes before it does pay off during the launch, but it is it can be exhausting. And I go back to Joanna Penn and some other people that I followed when I was just beginning to write is have as many books under your belt, manuscripts under your belt before you even begin publishing. And there's a reason for that mm -hmm. is because this takes a lot of energy and time and effort. And it's very hard to write while all of this uh, is going on while you're trying to, to get your books moving and going. Cause it's Heck, so you write over Thanksgiving holiday. I don't know anybody else who can do that. I stopped before Ten that, weeks. After my 50,000 before Thanksgiving. Ten weeks. <laughs> A lot of people do that because that's the month of NaNoWriMo. Yeah, so that's why I don't understand why it is in November, but that's why I did it. And my goal was to get to 50,000 before Thanksgiving and I made it. That I was writing. Terry, like, how long did it take you to write your book? I, I worked on that book probably off and on for 10 years. Boom. Okay, that's normal, not 10 weeks. <laughs> no, no, no. And Terry, do you plan to write other books or have you written other books? I have not written another book, but um, the reception on this one's been good. I've been enjoying it. I'm thinking, okay, I do have another story in me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead with that one. Well, will it be similar to this one, the same same kind of genre and all that? No, I'm actually thinking of, of more of a young adult book, um, just because of subject matter. Well, it, it makes sense since you were a middle school teacher. That's exactly right. And that's where the story would come from. Okay. Terry, uh, in fact, I will share that book, uh, a cover of your current book. Would you uh, explain a little bit... Um, Let's see, I got to find it. Explain a little bit what your book's about. Okay. I was, uh, I called the book an embellished memoir because, you know, there's so much of it that's fictionalized. I can't call it a memoir. But in 1966, you know, the, um, there were eight student nurses murdered on the south side of Chicago. Um, at that time, I was a 14 year old newspaper boy in that hospital where the nurses were studying. Uh, and, uh, 
so what the book is is not actually about the murders as such as that's a that's an event in the book but the book is about the effects of that murder on the neighborhood um and particularly the young people of the neighborhood and at the same time um that this was that the uh murders occurred was the beginning of white flight in on the south side of chicago and uh so the the murders of the nurses, the effect on it inter uh, intersects with um, the racial tensions of the time. So that's it in a nutshell. And, and you, you finished this book years ago, right? Well, I actually did finish it several years ago. And I just, I just didn't know what to do with it. Um, certainly self-publishing was a uh, possibility at the time. Uh, so that wasn't the issue. It was I think the big issue was letting it go. I just was afraid to put it out into the universe. I actually understand that. Sue, did you have that feeling the, before you published your first book? Yeah, it's called Total Fear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. My fear was uh, making an ass out of myself. That's People could read it, it right and there. understand how stupid you were. That's How'd you, true, that's what was yours? I had a um, part of mine was I that I understand that one totally. Also, <laughs> uh, the the fantasy of of writing a book right. and and having it published, and you, you could imagine all sorts of incredible things happening. That this book became an international bestseller. Uh, Spielberg wanted the movie rights. You okay. pictured yourself writing the screenplay and thanking the Academy. All that stuff it was fun to fantasize. Knowing once you put a book out, you know, you put the book out there, well, now you have to deal with the reality of it. Right. And, and what I'm enjoying is the reality of it now, but it was right. hard to get You've over. You've had kind of some good reception. Uh, uh, number one, how is the book being received? And number two, Terry, how did you market your book? Because then uh, we can bring Sandy and Amy in because that's what they do. That's and they may do. have some <clears throat> suggestions or opinions. Oh, I'll, uh, listen, I, I know nothing about marketing. So um, I published the book. It came out and I, I put it on Facebook. I mean, I announced to my friends on Facebook, all 200 of them, right? Uh, but I, we also had on... Um, a Facebook page for the neighborhood that I grew up in. And uh, what nice thing about Facebook is you can reconnect with people you haven't seen in, you know, over 40 years, because after white flight, people scattered to the winds, never saw them again. And so we have this Facebook page now and, and people have reconnected. So when I put my book on there, well, that was the most seminal event in all of our lives growing up with these murders, because mm -hmm. it happened right in our midst. And uh, so the reactions, everybody had a story. Everybody had a story that they wanted to, to share on Facebook. Um, so any sales that I've had on this book so far have, have you know, mostly been through that. So it's not, it's not a lot, to be honest with you, but they're, um, I will tell you they're very gratifying. They're almost as good as that fantasy of, I like to thank the Academy. Well, awesome. Sandy, what do you think that he should do now? He's opened the book, and this is something that uh, a lot of our viewers can appreciate because a lot of people uh, have, you know, they've published their book, they, their friends and their family have reacted. Uh, it's a good book. Now what do I do? And that's exactly where every author gets to. So you, I mean, it's wonderful. You have your book, you launch the book, or you announce the book or whatever you do to let people know. You put it on the Facebook page of your neighborhood where you grew up. So those people know you, those people knew Nina or knew about, were very well connected to Richard Speck and all the, the murders that he did at that time. They knew about the white flight, all of that. They, they were there when it was called white flight. Right. which was really for people that weren't there at that time. Yeah, some of our viewers, white said, Amy, do you know what moving. white flight is? <laughs> no, I see. And I have a feeling that a lot of really? people don't know. 
So yeah, why, I've why heard why? about the the nurses being murdered. I vaguely remember learning about that. Uh, I don't necessarily white flight doesn't. So white flight and the nurses are really two different topics. Yeah, so I don't know. One is Richard Speck and he killed nurses. Right. He was, you know, a serial killer and all that. And then mm -hmm. the, uh, the white flight is when a time when white people started moving to the suburbs and the black people were left in the downtown, the urban areas. Oh, so okay. they called it white flight because all the white people were leaving and moving to the suburbs. You know, so, it's so wonderful that a, a, an educated, professional young woman like Amy doesn't know, doesn't what, know what it is. is. Okay. It's a wonderful thing. It is. It is. Because it was not a good time for our country at right. all. And, and those of us that live there, and you know, because during that time, it's when they when they were trying to integrate the schools and doing all the other kind of stuff. So, oh, so oh, okay. What, Amy, did you say? No, I, I mean, just said, okay. That was sick. You said something. I said there was a lot of social upheaval. Yes, oh. yes. So it is wonderful that on the surface, it looks like we've done a great job of it. I know there's still a lot underlying under underneath. So, and we won't, we're not going into that today. So, um, so thank you for saying that, Terry. So, so back to marketing the book, um, every author ha gets their family and friends first. Every author has, that gets the people that they know first. I am a firm, firm, firm believer you will never get beyond that unless you do marketing, PR, social media, all the things that we teach in our courses and we do for our clients, Sue being one of our clients. So you don't have to have us, you, know, you don't have to have anybody. Just know that outside your circle or people that know you, and this is not just for Terry, this is for all authors, including the one that just sent me an email to help with her book launch. Um, Getting out of that circle, by the way, Russell, I did connect with Denise and I'm doing a press release for her for her event. Awesome. So, Denise, we'll see you soon. Yes, Denise will be, I would like Denise to be a guest um, before her show comes, before her thing is on the, and it's on the 27th. So we is, need to, are we talking about her play? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's a big deal. It is, and she's actually doing her book launch at the Children's Museum in the Woodlands. So um, so thank you, Pam Scoy. I don't know if Pam's on Facebook or not, but um, Pam is one of the, the person that recommended Denise because I did Pam's book launch many, many, many years ago at the Houston Children's Museum. Hey, so, Sandy, can you tell me about the article that you read or where you found out that Pinterest is a good market for authors? Because I always thought that it was just good for like DIY authors. Well, that's what we are as DIY authors. So um, no, but I'm talking about like you know what I'm saying, like <clears throat> DIY, like how to build things or create. You know, yeah. what I'm talking so about which is what Pinterest is buying. really. Pinterest, which you know, I I honestly because I don't stay on Pinterest as much as I do some of the other social media. Mm -hmm. But when I talked to some, I was talking to um to my granddaughter Miranda this weekend because yesterday a friend of hers had a gender reveal party. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does yeah. anybody know what a gender reveal party is? Yeah, those are I do. I know what one is. Well, yeah. isn't that cool? I mean, I'm like a gender reveal party. Oh, yeah. These have <laughs> been going on a couple of years. Sandy, you're kind of behind them. I am. I, you know what I told him, Sue? I'm like, I know what a cover reveal party is. <laughs> <laughs> kind of the <laughs> same thing. the cover of the book. Same thing. <laughs> so she said, well, you, if you go on Pinterest, you'll find all kind of information on that. And I'm like, wow, that's great. So we're going to do more Pinterest right. coming up. But actually, Amy, it was um, mm -hmm. one of my Fiverr people that said, Oh, me. okay. And she said, I put it on Pinterest because I find I get better results on Pinterest than anywhere else. So, like, yeah, I find that fast. I find that interesting. <clears throat> I just think that it would be good for like guides. So that, that's interesting. So that's an interesting market. Yep. So we're going to try that. We're going to try Pinterest more. Now, that said, we all know that right now the hottest hottest social media is Instagram. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, that's where, and Sue, you and I are going to go kicking and screaming into Instagram world. <laughs> Terry, are yep. you on Instagram? I am on Instagram. I did. Oh, you promoted yay. your book on Instagram. Yeah. Well, I did post, I did post my book on Instagram. Yeah. That's all I've done. Does not that's make fantastic. Amy happy. 
And I bet you didn't put any, uh, what are they hashtags. called? Hashtags. hashtags. Um, yeah, I did put some hashtags on. Oh, oh. yay. See? Wait, You're more progressive. I know about hashtags. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. That's awesome. That is awesome. fantastic. No, Sandy, so there's apps. I mean, I've known about some of them, but they keep coming out with more apps that integrate with Instagram that'll help you create Instagram stories, help you get more Instagram followers. I need that. Humoring, I can't stuff do like stories. that. You should just go to your, what do you use? iTunes, go to your app store and type in Instagram and you'll see all the ones that pop up and Instagram followers will pop up, boomerang, all those video edits and stuff like that. I mean, I started playing around with them because I was creating a Mother's Day video. They are fantastic. Like it had made me want to come back to Instagram because I've kind of gotten off Instagram just because it was bogged down with so many ads. But it's mm -hmm. those new apps that integrate are fantastic. I love them. Well, we're going to have to have a special, when we do our, um, <clears throat> just the three of us next month, June. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's plan to spend most of the time talking about Instagram and how to, or apps, maybe tools and stuff that help you. I actually got in on the ground floor of something and I got it free. Um, this app, this tool actually, so you can use it on desktop as well, that converts your uh, blog to video mm -hmm. to wow. video and yeah, you were talking about that last Tuesday. I know and I haven't had a chance to practice and I've been kind of busy this weekend so <laughs> I am going to practice it and then I'm going to introduce it <clears throat> and I really want us to start and then we can start using it because I I mean I, I have it free for a year nice so I'm sure that I don't that I you know take advantage of it and then I'll buy it at the end of a year if I've used it and if it has value yeah. I bought two things at the same time, that one, and then another one that converts your blogs into an ebook for you. So nice. I haven't even played around with that one yet. So anyway, we got lots of stuff, but I do have to, I've got to focus. So I've been wondering about that. <clears throat> about what? Focus. <laughs> <laughs> Focus is not my strong point. Not this morning. <laughs> not any morning. <laughs> Russell, not this morning. this morning. Amy should focus. She's got to go to federal court. And she, she has to leave. Can. She has no, to leave. I just get all jacked up on coffee. The lady keeps making coffee and it works fine for me. So work. <laughs> <laughs> whatever keeps me going. So Terry, what had you write this book? What was the story behind this book? Um, you know, I, when I when we when I gave you a little uh, uh, nutshell review, uh, description of my book, I didn't mention where the title came from because it's Nina's That's smile, true. and um, and I think Nina was the driving force behind my book. Nina was one of the victims of the of, of the murder. She was one of the nurses, and as I said, I was a fourteen year old newspaper boy. And I used to see Nina in the hallway and she would smile at me. That's all. She would smile at me. It was a beautiful smile. And it sort of warmed me, you know, because you know, I was a 14 year old kid. She was a 25 year old woman. Um, and, and, and then she was dead, you know, she, you know, brutally murdered by, you know, by Richard Speck. And that's always haunted me. And, and so in some way, I wa always wanted to pay homage to her in, in, in some way. Um, and, and so this book idea, I mean, I always like to write, you know, and so this book idea sort of grew, you know, I'd say over the years, but really it was over the decades. And um, it was just a matter of sort of having the hook to write the book about. And, and so when I realized that, um, of course, the murders themselves, are, are an incredible topic, but also the um, the effects that it had on people. That uh, sort of started then uh, germinate a story in me. But I think, but to me again, Nina was the driving force behind this book. That's awesome. <clears throat> what a tribute to her, and um, and the fact that you you know as a young newspaper boy, a newspaper person. Um, you know, saw her, saw that smile and then later, you know, wrote, wrote the book. So how old were you when you were seeing that smile? 
Um, so again, it would have been um, when I was 13 and 14. Okay. Okay. I, I didn't hear you. So it was that. right. The events are, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, happened 1966. Yeah. So. Oh, wow. Okay. So then now did you wait till after you retired from teaching to, to actually write the book? Yeah, that's true. I, 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 you know, I, I think I, I know over the years I would write a paragraph or here, here and there and just sort of come up with some ideas, but it really wasn't until I retired and that was in 2007 that I actually started to sit down and write the book. And you said you were, you taught at middle schools. I taught middle school, right. Earlier, so, and now the next book may be that you're thinking about the next book being a um, middle, what do they call those? Um, young adult. Young adult. Oh, young yeah. adult. Now there is one that's a little bit earlier Pretty. than young adult. And what is that called? Was there, that might be, that might be more what I'm looking at. I don't know the title for that. Um, Oh, middle reader, middle reader, something like that. I forgot yeah. what it is. Um, I know that's James Patterson. He has several books. Okay. So I'm aware of those books. So yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, so that's good. And I I mean honestly, I don't know that I don't know how they distinguish between the two categories, other than I think you you write a little more mature as a young adult than as a middle. Reader. Anyway, that's awesome. I love 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 that. So. What are your plans with the book? Well, I, you know what? I don't, I'm going to be real honest. I don't have a lot of plans with the book. My, my, my big goal was to write it. Okay. First of all, um, I had this book inside me that had to get out. Uh, I wanted to do an homage to um, Nina and I, uh, it, and I wanted to somehow let her family know that I had written this book. And that was an interesting little journey because I um, <laughs> couldn't find them, couldn't find anybody. And about three months ago, just before I published, <laughs> I saw an article in the Chicago Tribune, or actually it was on, online, but it was in the Chicago Tribune, about her brother had found a treasure trove of pictures of, of Nina. Uh, from her nursing days, and he was afraid to open them, he said, and he um, opened it and realized that they didn't bring back the memories of her death, they brought her back to life. Mm. Uh, so now I had sort of a trail to find him. And talk about great coincidences, as I'm talking to you now, I get these little pop-ups on my screen, and uh, her, her name was Nina Schmale. And I got a little thing here that says, John Schmail sent you a friend request. Oh, cool. Yeah, cool. right now. So <clears throat> we obviously have finally, I've, I posted on Facebook and um, there is actually, there's actually a nurse's page too, a memorial nurse's page. And I posted there. So um, I, I think he must have seen that. So that's as far as I've gotten. So I've been very intrigued. I wanted to do a book launch. I was, but again, I was going to do it with uh, friends and neighbors. But you, you're, you're starting to open my eyes that there's much more that I actually... Oh, there's so much more, Terry. I think we should have a whole <clears throat> telecast. The five <clears throat> of us can be on again and talk about uh, what his next step should be. Because Sue is going through them for like the third time. Uh -huh. She's done it right. She's done it wrong. Right, yep. Sue? Yep. And, and a lot, uh, a lot more Terry's like, right, right. what should I do? Yeah, and it sounds like, um, um, and Sue, you've connected with uh, and, and gotten some support on this. Like, uh, you've, uh, did you actually hire Sandy? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, I didn't even know that was a thing. Well, the only reason I found Sandy is because my niece is friends with her. Uh huh. And she said, um, because what I was doing before wasn't working, I was getting rather irritated. And she said, before you do anything else, call Sandy. And okay. so let me, so let me tell the story that we, or you tell about um, the, when you call me the first time. Uh, at the very first, um, Sandy gave us some good ideas and some names of some other people because you were doing something else at the time. Weren't I was you? not doing, putting you on, doing Amazon book launches but, no, or, at no, all. Not. And then about two years passed. You're and welcome. I, and I, I did. I did give you one hundred percent of the credit, <laughs> Mr. Little. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> because Ooh. we said in the Facebook party the other night. Did you hear me tell you say that? No, I was drinking at, uh, while you guys were on. Even though I was there. I know you were. I know. Because <laughs> and I said, Russell, if you're listening, 
um, I give you full credit because when Russell hired, so Russell hired me also, and and I've told a lot of people at Write Fest about how you hired me. Yeah. So after Russell hired me and his book came out, we had his, well, before the book came out, I had never done for any author what Russell wanted me to do for him. And he knew that. So he wanted me to get him on Amazon to literally like click the button to get him on Amazon. And he, he, he had already paid them. That was the big thing. When he hired me, he'd already paid Amazon for the cover design, the marketing, all the maximum that you could hire Amazon for really, he had already paid them. So we had no choice, but to go, with Amazon and do everything with Amazon. And that worked fine because Russell, I would go over to Russell's place every week and we would sit at his table and or out by the pool if it was nice enough. And literally- It's a good working space. It is a good work. It's a great working space. It really made me know where I'm gonna live someday. (laughs) Poor David. (laughs) Poor David. Poor David. Poor David. Anyway. Um, so we, we put it on Amazon, we tracked everything on Amazon, we set up his book launch on Amazon, we did ads on Amazon. I mean, we use Amazon to the max because of Russell. And so therefore I felt confident and I had another, I had a couple of clients that I helped with after that. And then when Sue came back to me and it had been two or three years that she came back and her, and her, her niece Kat said, you, can you talk to my aunt again because she's very frustrated so I did then I said I can help you Sue I can help you get on Amazon you don't yeah. need to go through a publisher you don't need to pay anybody to do it for you you know we need to have a whole podcast just on that though because there's a whole different reasons that uh, publishers may be needed that we need to discuss <laughs> probably with a couple of your publisher <laughs> friends because I think I need a publisher next time. And you know what? Here, so there. So that's funny that you said that because I thought Amy, we're, Amy and I are going to be doing a, um, a webinar to announce the next course. And I, I think I'm going to do it on to self-publish or not. And, and we're going to talk about what you, the different choices and the advantages of any of them. The advantage of what, of what we did with you, Russell, is we were in control. We looked at everything, we managed everything, we approved everything back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, You don't have that control when you go to one of the independent publishers and yet you don't do all the work either. So there's a trade-off. Well, the most important thing you get with the publisher is you get your books in bookstores. Right. Well, not necessarily. Well, I know, but that's... That's what I'm looking at. That's why uh, I think I may need to do, and we need to get off this tangent. We can talk about this. Yes, we need to have a whole thing on this because we're talking about Terry today. So, Terry. <laughs> yeah, it should all be about me, right? Yeah. <laughs> and we didn't have our social media question for today. Do we want to? Yeah, we've actually had a couple. We've had Pinterest. Oh, that's we've great. had how to stay off a federal jury. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's just an education overload today. I'm hoping today's my last day. I do have to go, though, because I have to drive downtown. And okay. so, Amy, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything and for your help this weekend. Of course. And, and I'll be in touch with you. Let me know when you have, have some time. If you're not on jury duty, let me know. So we and I'll see you at the courthouse. <laughs> but if I don't say hi, it's because I'm afraid of your judge. <laughs> it's okay. I don't blame you. Terry, it was so nice meeting you. Sue, congratulations on your Thank book launch. You. Russell, hopefully I see you later. I'll see you later. <laughs> Thank Bye. you, Amy. Bye, Good luck Amy. with jury duty. <laughs> so we are going to wrap this up pretty soon anyway. With this in almost 45 minutes. So um, this is kind of a long author talk, but we had a lot. Well, you kind of drifted around. <laughs> <laughs> well, you haven't you haven't made fun of me as much today as you normally do. What's wrong I, with you? I don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you've dropped a lot of good uh, bon mots because I'm very. I have some next steps to go to now. I hadn't even, and I didn't know what to do next. To be honest, what so. what do you think your next steps are? And let's wind up with that, and then read our viewers' comments, Sandy. Yes, sir. 
What What do you think your next steps are, Terry? Um, now. Well, I, I I have to make the public aware of what that my book is out there and what the right. story is, and, and so, so is a million other books, right? Yes, exactly. I mean, so I really don't know what I, you know, what physically what I am to do next. Been there, done that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm very interested in your experiences, Sue, and Sandy and Russell. You know, we have to have. We can have a separate call on that. Yeah. But we're not on the air. We're not doing Facebook. Yeah. So, um, so I'll be in touch with you, Terry. I have your email address now, so I will reach out, and we may we can have a call just like this where we discuss everything. We're just not live on Facebook, or we can do it live on Facebook anytime as well. So I'm a, sure, and I'm going. That might be a pretty good podcast. By the way. I know. I know. What do our guests say? I'm okay. So Red, <laughs> I love our viewers. Red says, just average this week with last week, and it works out fine. <laughs> <laughs> so we must have Oh, been yeah, two seconds. <laughs> yeah, no. That's, last week's when we had the trouble <laughs> getting live. That's just because I wasn't on. Oh, is that yeah. what happened? Okay, yeah. well, I'm glad to know that. So Robert says, hey there, miss doing these with you guys. Keep up the great work. So Robert, you're welcome back anytime look yeah. at you he's with us almost every week now so um you want to be part of the party just let us know we'd love to have you um nicole Car carter is a friend of amy's i believe vola said good morning it's a party so um yeah lots of lots of good stuff lots of good conversations and see if i miss anybody jenny hi jenny she says she wrote a book also it's a children's book Sarah Hansen and Sarah is Sue's daughter ask, um, why do reviews get pulled? And Sarah, that's a long That's question. a great question. It is, it is. So do we want to take time to answer it this morning? Yes, I think okay. that's a legitimate question. Okay, good. Then Sarah, here's what happens. Somehow, we don't know how, Amazon finds out there's a connection. I will tell you why. It's, it's the magic that I always talk about, algorithms. And if they are connected, if you have your, your uh, Amazon, and we, you know this, Andy, because we talked about this, and we actually discussed and strategized this, and all authors should, and this tells you that Sue is connected some way, you must disconnect your Amazon with your non Amazon or non and Google uh, networks, because the Amazon has uh, algorithm reaches out there and finds all the people that are connected to you other ways. And if they're too close, they get rid of them. But we don't know what too close is. We well, for example, if you are my friend on Facebook and my Facebook is also connected to my Amazon account, Amazon will look on your Facebook accounts. And if you're there, you're a friend and they'll cut it. Interesting. Because I, I, I do have a review up on my book and it's written by my cousin. And he and he says he's my cousin in, in the in his opening. Uh, well, tell the rest of your relatives to don't put. Okay, the, and it, it may be more than now. <laughs> I know Sue had a couple of her um, her family members were pulled. We had everybody pulled that works for my company and and is part of helping Sue with the marketing. But not for book one. Bola is still on book one. But Bola was pulled this time for the first, actually, this is the first time Bola's ever been pulled, I think. Well, I think you yeah. need to go back and re-examine the way Sue's uh, social media is interconnected. Sue, uh, we'll talk about that because I think you are disconnected. And we, I think we made sure of that, that it was not, that she used a different username, different password, different everything. So Amazon's got it. And so here's the thing. I do respect very much so that Amazon doesn't want all the reviews to be your friends and family saying, yep. I love this book. Because right. that's not always the case. Most of your friends and family are going to tell you it's wonderful, regardless. Yeah. And that except means. Except for my wife. <laughs> except for, yes, that's very true. <laughs> Melinda would be on. So uh, thank you, Melinda. But Amazon no. doesn't, doesn't count on that. <laughs> so. Um, 
if I'm going to read a book and I'm looking at the reviews to determine whether I want to read it or not, and every review there says this is a wonderful book, wonderful book, and I don't know that's family members saying that and I buy this book and it's horrible, which we've had some cases of that, then, um, you know, that's, I appreciate the reasoning behind Amazon. And, and just wish we could figure out so we can get some reviews on it. So this is the first, most of the time they come back before they review it, before they post it and say, this review could be biased and so we're not gonna post it. This time, no, this time they actually pulled them after they were live. Well, the, Amazon's getting more and more aggressive. Mm. Yes. Interesting. And they're changing uh, the way they're doing it and they're getting more aggressive on that. So you have to understand that going in. I mean, it's constant adaptability, right? That's what this is about. Yep. You know, when you talk about next steps, one of the things that I would really love is that most of the people who have read my book, they may not be connected to me personally, but they're connected to my neighborhood, right? So they're connected to the event. Um, so that they have a buy-in to the book in a way that most people don't. Yeah. So I'd be curious as like people like yourselves who sort of remember this event, but um, you don't know, you don't really know me. And, and, you know, you know, what is your, I'd love feedback like that from people. Well, I just bought it. So I'll give you feedback. Oh, I appreciate I that. that. I think that's a fair thing because I, I do remember the more you're talking about this, cause I was about 13 at the time. I do remember hearing about this. It was on the news a lot, yeah. but I lived in Pasadena, Texas at the time. So Chicago was a long ways away. Yeah, but he went on from he went on from Chicago to other cities, though, didn't he? Richard Speck, no, he was he was he was abducted immediately. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So I get I'm probably thinking about Jeffrey Dahmer because I know he went on. Oh, yeah. he, he went, went on for a while. He went from Bath. His first victim was here in Bath. So who then, was he? To, who was it in Florida that, that killed a lot of nurses? Well, well Bundy was Bundy in Florida. It could be Bundy, yeah, Ted Bundy. Bundy. That's true. Okay. Yeah. Um, because I so I, I've heard of Richard Speck, but uh, but over the years, hearing about all the other oh, ones is kind of yeah. confusing. Technically, Richard Speck was a mass murderer because his victims all happened at one time, and that was it. He was he was apprehended, but he's he. he I mean, his crime, of course, is is ghastly, but he was kind of the first uh, mass murderer linked to serial killing, you know, that type, that word in modern history, in modern American history. And unfortunately he's, he wasn't the last and that's. Yep. Yep. So, um, thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Terry. It's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I, we were, I was going to talk about how you and Russell know each other. Um, so, but we'll save that for another time. Um, thank you again. And I look forward to reading your book and, also, I was thinking that as you were talking, um, you know, I do online courses for anybody who wants to, you know, do their own marketing and own PR. And our newest one is going to be back to basics. We're going to talk about PR, marketing, all of that. So if you're interested in being part of that, we meet every Monday night at seven central time. So, okay. And you um, uh, sent me a friend request. And so we are I connected. Did. We are connected. Good. So we will. So watch out for the reviews. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I look forward hey, to that. Yeah. Thanks for being here. I know you've had been had been really busy lately, and uh, and it's funny because when you said when you sent me the text and said of all days the doctor's late, and and you had also said Terry hasn't responded yet, so I'm like when, when I got on with Terry, I'm like Terry, I didn't realize you were a doctor. <laughs> he said I'm not. I'm supposed to, no. I had to go check in for my I yellow fever and typhoid shot. I remembered then that you were at the doctor's office and that's what you were talking about. So, so where are you headed to Russell that you need India. that? India. So you should Terry, come, to, you've been, come with Terry, me. You been with him on one of his, you've been with him on one of his travels, right? That's right. I met Russell in Israel. Yep. Right. Oh, wow. We climbed, Terry was one of the people that climbed cliffs to the Ju the first Jupiter temple with us because no one else would take us up there. The guy wouldn't go. So Melinda and I and a couple of others, including Terry, climbed the hill to get to Jupiter's temple. Well, you and Melinda have climbed lots of hills, lots of high, 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 high. I would have high. hesitated if the if the guide wasn't even willing to go. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of places to guide. He didn't take us to the Temple Mount. We went to the Temple Mount. Really? Uh, 
he wouldn't eat some of the street food. We ate the street food. Oh. And Terry was always there. Terry was one of the uh, uh, other people with us that he he would always do the extra step with us. It was cool. That's how you that's see it, that, right? That's how we got to be friends because we did the extra stuff together. That's awesome. That's awesome. We explored the caves of Petra together. Yes, oh, that we, we did awesome. just explore the caves of Petra together. Oh, wow. That would have been awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All of that. All, all Rode of the camels thing. across the Wadi Rum Desert. <laughs> Russell's <laughs> travels are very, are always fun to hear about and read about. So, Russell, you should probably write for a travel magazine or something. Yeah. Well, I, I, in my only time. trouble is that I can't write a book in 10 weeks, like super <laughs> soon. <laughs> Yeah. Right, it takes me two or three years to get through. Oh, no, yeah. the words are coming out again, so I'm happy. It is nice when they start flowing again, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it is. So, have a great week. We'll see you next Monday at 10 a.m. Central on like author- and comment on the YouTube channel, please. Yeah, yes, later today. So, right now, you're seeing us live on Facebook. Later today, I'll post a link to the YouTube video. Jerry, you'll be able to see it since I sent you a friend request. And go to YouTube and comment. Okay. So, we want to get more comments on YouTube, although thankfully, our numbers on YouTube have been rising recently. So, we're yes. excited. So, thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for including.